yo, we're going to talk about motorcycles. We're going to talk about life. We're going to get me back into shape. I'm going to lose some weight. I'm going to do it all while I get punched in the face right up the street from my shop at Butcher Shop Boxing. Right, hey, I guess time to stop working. It's 3.20 now. I'm a little bit late for my appointment at the gym with the champ here, John Boucher. He's going to get me back into shape. I used to train all the time, and um, it's been quite a while since we moved to Tennessee and had kids and building a life. Man, I'm sure you know how it is. Yeah, we've been, we've been talking about it for a little yeah. bit, huh? Yep. But I know you're always busy, man. That's why today I was like, man, what time is it? I said, I guarantee. I told these guys, I guarantee we go over there. Billy's working, has no idea what time it is. All right, man, you can make me sweat more than I am right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why just being nervous about it, you know what I mean? Uh, but um, I'm, I'm actually really looking forward to it, man. I've been wanting to get back in shape and wanting to get back in, back in the ring and back on the mat. And um, man, I'm, 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 uh, I'm really stoked to be doing this with you. It's going to be a good time, man. We're right, ready champ. to go, man. Yeah. Let's go. Let's hit it. Let's go. Tell me about Las Vegas right there. Uh, that was Vegas. That was this year. Yeah. Masters tournament, national masters tournament. Yep. Everybody comes from all over the country. The best of the best, man. If you're good, you want to be there so you can pick home a belt like that, yeah. you know. And uh, that was a knockout in 13 seconds. That's the uppercut yeah. knockout you were showing me on the yeah. water bag. <laughs> nice. Yeah. nice. That's it right there. Hey, so. well, if you want to learn more about uh, John Boucher the Butcher, about Boucher the Butcher YouTube channel, click like, subscribe. I'm watching it. You guys should watch it too. Dude, so why did you, uh, why is now the time to get, start working out again? I got kids, man, I'm getting older, you know, and you I want You got wanna, new kids coming. I got a new kid coming, and I want to be, you know, I want to be in good shape for them. Um, I, I've done it my whole life, I even, you know, I started lifting weights and doing all kind of cardio and training and wrestling when I was, you know, like 12, 11. And so my body's always kind of had a good foundation. I mean, you build a good foundation, but if you don't maintain it, and, you know, I already look better than most guys my age, you know, um, you want to take your watch off? Or? Yeah, I'm, but I'm going to use it because it's got a fitness, got a calorie counter on it. Oh, okay. So I will use it, but, um, no. but uh, you know, so that's important to me, man, you know, to maintain that foundation. You know, I want to look good, man. You know, I want to be sloppy. Man, and you, you're not a, you're not a desk guy. I mean, you're always working. You're, all, you're always standing, wrenching, you know, I mean, oh, yeah. you're always pretty active, you know, so yeah. that should help. Real active and physical at work, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I move all that stuff around, I don't have anybody to help me, so. Man, and that's the one thing that probably a lot of people don't know. They probably see your work and what you produce, and they don't understand that you're a one-man show over there doing all that all stuff that. on your own. All that. You know, and making the bikes that you make. Yeah. And going to auctions and going to rally, you know, going to surge and, like, doing all that stuff, yep. man, and you're, you're it. Yep, and then on top of it, you know, I'm doing the video stuff. So and how um, long have you been doing that YouTube channel? I, I, well, I've really, really been doing it for less than a year. Yeah. I mean, I started, you know, putting stuff up a couple years ago, but I've really been doing it for less than a year. I got serious about it. I said, okay, yeah. if I don't do it now, same as with this. Yeah. If I don't do it now, when am I going to do it? Right. Um, you know, and it's working, man. That's working, and this is going to work. Yeah. All right, man, we'll warm up in front of the mirror over here. You know, light on your feet. Yeah. Let's do one uh, on the scale. You want me to guess it? <laughs> 205. I think it's 204. Yeah? Let's see. It's on 204 right now. You're right on. Yeah. 202? 204. That's 204, yeah. That is the answer to your question, why do I want to get here and train? Last time you ran, I actually ran uh, the last couple weeks. I've been running a little bit. My yeah. tummy is up a little bit. Okay. I've been running. Um, yeah, I knew I was gonna need it. Yeah. I, mean, I need a lot more, but you know, I started three days ago. I ran. Yeah. Yeah. How how far? Three miles. 
Nice. Yeah, that, that's it. That's. I'll do two to three, just depending yeah. on. I was running uh, 50 miles a week when I was in prison. Woo! Oh yeah. Damn. Oh yeah. It's a lot of miles. A lot of miles. I was, you know, I was 170 pounds in. Yeah. And I was eating about, you know, 30 calories a day. Yeah. So. Boom. Oh, oh, boom. That's it right there. Boom. Box. Box. You get tired, man. Box. Yeah, man, just you keep it tight. It's yeah. good. Oh man, I started getting winded and I noticed I was dropping my hands. I was getting out of getting out of my feet. I'm like, whoo! On a, uh, what was that, two rounds? On, oh yeah. On a scale of one to 10, what do you give yourself for the first day? <laughs> I'm being generous with a solid 1.0. <laughs> Billy goes boxing, gets a one on the first day. Yeah, man. Good. That's, hey, hey, you gotta start somewhere. Hey, that's right. If you're at zero, it means you haven't even tried yet. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And most people won't even start. That's the, yeah. the trick. Oh, yeah. But I know I'm in good hands. Yeah. I trust you. I mean, I know you're not going to send me through the ropes. Not yet. On the first day. Not yet. I know you will. <laughs> oh, I know you will. You got the look in your eye, man. You got the belt on the wall and the look in your eye. That's how I know. But, um, yeah, man. It feels good, though. I'm going to start hitting that weight cage in my shop, too, you know. And, uh, yeah. And do keep that, my cardio, and then this. I mean, you know, yeah. I'll get back up there quick, you know, and then I just gotta work on my. Dude, it's like two weeks and you start to feel different, you know. That's a, work on my fundamentals, man, you yeah. know, and then I, how I modeled myself was, you know, I was born in 1970. So hip hop, rap came in in the late 70s, early 80s. There was, this was what was on the radio, right? Rock and roll and like R&B and stuff. And they had no place to go, so they made a way for themselves. You know, they, they had to make music, they had to express themselves. And they started doing it through their music and they made their own way. They created their own labels. You know, they yeah. handed, handed cassettes out in the hood, you know, yeah. and that's how they made their names for themselves, you know, and, and that's kind of what I've done with my career. You know what I mean? In a way, that's what you're doing with yours, you know? I mean, you go out, you prove yourself. I prove myself at bike shows and bike events. Yeah. And then come back and come back stronger the next one, you know what I mean? And yeah. People see me at a show and be like, oh, I'm better than him. No, man, I'm hauling that heavy ass trophy home, man. You're going to yeah. be handed. You know what I mean? Right? And you, you got that belt when you walk out of the ring. Yeah. You know. You know how it feels, and that's that's how I model myself. But you're right, man. You got to get up and do it. Ain't nobody gonna do it for you. You got to get up and do it. But you're like, and, and I know you're not arrogant, and I know you, right? So I know you're not. But you are the top vintage builder in the world, right? I mean, who's better than you? Are there are there guys that are up there with you? You know, when you say better, I mean, there's a lot of really good guys out there, and you know how it is when you're the champ. You got to fight to keep that belt, but. There's guys that are out there that are really, really good and definitely on my level and maybe above it, but it's how you're regarded by everybody else. How does everybody else view you, you know? And how consistent are you, you know? Yeah. You can win on a fluke, come yeah. back and never never do it again, you know, who's done it? But, so, you know, I'm pretty highly regarded. I've been doing it 35 years. And, um, you know, the thing is, I'm not, I'm not cocky, but I'm confident. I know I'm good. Yeah. You know, I know I'm good. And I know when I see something good, it inspires me to be better, you know? Yeah. That's in my nature. That's why I'm here, you know? Yeah. I know you're better than me. I'll never be as half as good as you at this, but you know, I, I can aspire. I can look up and say, man, I bet it feels good to stand there. <laughs> when I go to your shops, I see a bunch of challenges. I see like 09s, 05s. I see really old yeah. bikes. Do you specifically go after bikes that are one of nine in the world? You know, do you go after those to, to keep challenging yourself? Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't, this isn't snobbery saying that. I don't change people's oil for a living. You know what I mean? I don't change tires. I mean, I do it because it needs to be done in my shop, but that's not how I make my living. I make my living doing what nobody else can do, but nobody else has the, you know, the mentality to try and do. 
you know, and I always go after those challenges, you know, and, um, and I, I, I'm that way in every part of my life, you know, my relationship with my wife and my kids, you know, coming in here, you know what I mean? Like everything is, you know, like, you know, you know, you don't need me to tell you this, most adult males have had maybe one real fight in their life, two real fights if you're lucky. Yeah. I mean, I've won a lot more than I've, I've lost, and I've lost some, but you know, I've never been out afraid to go out and try it, you know what I mean? And yeah. I'm gonna pin people on the mat, I've submitted people on the mat, I've knocked people out, and I've been knocked out, and I've been submitted, I've been pinned. So, but you know, like we were saying, if you don't try and you don't lose, you don't ever know what the reward of success is. Right. You know, and, um, and I'm that, that way with everything, you know? So like for me to commit the time to come over here, is, you know, it's not just, it's for no other reason, but pure desire to do it. You know, I want to learn from you. I like you as a person, I, you know, I want to remain friends. And, um, you know, and I, I know you have a lot to offer me. You know what I mean? That's why I'm here. Well, I'm always uh, amazed at the projects you have going on over there. What, what's been some of your recent stuff that's just, I mean, it, I always go like, I can't believe this that I'm standing here looking at this <laughs> when I'm seeing stuff in your shop. What's some of the, the more interesting stuff you got in there? Like I have a, a, a factory Harley-Davidson racing motorcycle that people from Harley-Davidson Milwaukee are coming down to see because they have one, but it doesn't run. And there's only nine in the world and mine's the only one that runs that anybody alive has ever seen running. So we're gonna take it out to the track and ride it. And then I'm doing this project called Cool Hand, which is I'm building 50 hand-built custom bikes. I mean, literally I'm making the engine with old parts and I'm, I'm making the frame, I'm making the front end, I'm making the tanks, I'm hand making everything, but they're all identical and hand numbered. I mean, I've been successful with it already, but it's something I, I've been wanting to do for, you know, for 20 plus years. And like we're saying with other stuff, you know, if you get to points where, okay, if I don't do it now, when am I going to do it? I'm 52 right. years old. So, you know, a lot of exciting stuff. And then I'm always looking down the road. You know, I don't, I'm not just looking to my paycheck on Friday. I'm looking 15 years, 20 years down the road. What's, what's going to be next for me? Because, you know, for me, it's, it, there's a lot of parallels between your life and mine. You know, you, you can't fight forever. You know what I mean? So you have to get to progress on to something else. You know, you have to, and you know, you're so good at what you do now that you're, you're building a foundation for what your future is going to be at some point, you know? And I'm, I'm the same way. I have to look, you know, I don't know what the trends are going to be. I don't know what the economy is going to do. You know, I work in gasoline powered vehicles, which are people are trying to stamp out. So I have to be saying to myself, what's next? What's coming down the road? So that 20 years from now, when my kids are in college, I'm still relevant. I'm still making a living. I can still support them and help them out in the ways they're going to need. And then also, I love what I do. I don't want to do anything else. Yeah. I mean, look at this face. What am I going to do with this face? <laughs> so uh, this is a face that deserves to be hit. So, I mean, you know, I've only done this my entire adult life, and I don't want to do anything else. So I have to make my way, like I was talking about the hip-hop guys. They, they didn't, hip-hop guys didn't want to sing country music. They could have gone to Nashville and maybe been a country star or gone to L.A. and been a rock star, but they stayed in Brooklyn and Queens and Compton and became rappers because that was their path and that's what they wanted to do. Yeah. You know, that's what they say. It's that, you know, every man's real purpose in life is to find his true potential. You know, what do you, what do you put here to do? I mean, you know, you're all put here to have families and be a good person and raise kids, but you know, what fulfills you? What makes you a better father when you're raising your kids? You know, what makes you a better person when your neighbors look at you and wave to you as you go down the street? So, you know, that's, that's where I'm, where I'm looking at. And I didn't have the, the, you know, ability to see that when I was 30, yeah. you know, which is you're a grown man at 30, but I was too immature. And, you know, luckily I've grown up and you know, here I am at the ripe old age of 52. Yeah. Um, all right, man, let's, we'll, we'll, let's go get a run on. Run. Yeah. Yep, I'm going to keep my mouthpiece in just for training. Good. I know you took it easy on me. I know that's going to change every time, but um, I'm ready for it. I'm uh, but I'm glad. I'm glad day one's done because first day is the hardest day, right? That's right. First step's the hardest one to take. I was telling you a year ago, I lost you know over 30 pounds and I was down up to, in the 180s. So I know that that's real for me, yeah. just from diet and exercise. So I know that that's what will happen here. So you know I know that weight's not everything, but I you know I, I 20 needs to come off real quick. No, I'm gonna let you take it all off for me. A lot of times when you start working out, people use the scale as their gauge and it's this bad gauge yeah. because you can build muscle underneath and you still got the fat on top. Yeah. So I'll, I got, a, I got a, a fat percentage calculator. It's just a little pinch thing. Um, I'll bring that. I think I, I can't remember. I, I got it somewhere, but I'll bring that. 
that's really how you can gauge like your progress. Because yeah. you'll be surprised that in a in a, a measuring tape. Yep. You'll you'll lose four inches off your waist. You'll your your fat percentage will go down. I mean that's how you really tell. But weight throws people off. They'll get in and they'll get discouraged because yeah. they're like. Right. And it's like, no, man, you're slimming down. You're just, you're building muscle at the same time. Yeah. So, <laughs> all right, man, I'll see you okay. in the morning. Thanks. All right. Hey, well, if you want to learn more about uh, John Boucher the Butcher, Boucher the Butcher YouTube channel, click, like, subscribe. I'm watching it. You guys should watch it too.